Today is August the 4th, 2016. My name is Tanya Pincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University. And today I am in Venita, Oklahoma to speak with Judy Logan. And this is part of our uh, Glass House Restaurant project, which is in Venita. So thank you for coming today. You're welcome. Let's learn a little bit about you, beginning with when and where you were born. Uh, December the 25th, 1943, in Welch, Oklahoma. Okay. Christmas baby. Christmas, yeah. During World War II baby, too. Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember that, I'm sure. No, I don't remember that. But in the timeline there. Yeah, in that timeline, yes. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had two brothers, younger. Younger. Oldest sister. No sister. Yeah, I was the oldest sister. sister. Yeah. And did you get to boss them around? Um, I don't remember that. I was just, we were just lived on a farm and lived in the country and we didn't have TV, we had a radio and um, I can remember sitting at the, sitting at us sitting around the radio and listening to the, uh, stories that were being told, you know, and you got to imagine your imagination with with the stories, you know. It's I can't even remember what the name of those shows were, but I can remember us sitting around the radio listening to maybe Hop Along Cassidy and Long Ranger, you know. But you know, I don't remember that. We were always busy. Well always kind of, had things on the farm to take care of. What kind of farm? What did he do for? Uh, my dad. We had a. We lived on uh, in the twelve miles in the country. Uh, I think it was three hundred and twenty acres. And my dad worked at B. F. Goodrich in Miami. And we had my mother always did a big garden and canned. And we had cows and pigs and chickens. So there was always. We were always something to do. Well, being the only daughter, did you have to do most of the work in the kitchen and the, no. boy, and the boys out? Or, no. no, every set. No, I helped my mom in the kitchen, but like every Saturday, everybody went outside and had chores. You had chores to do every Saturday. You know, it was clean the barn out. We had horses. Uh, in the summertime, school was out, and everybody had a horse. And Daddy would come in. He worked nights at BF Goodrich, and he would uh, come in from work and saddle the horses in the barn, so that we had something to do all day long. And that's what we did: was ride horses. We'd go down to the pond. We had BB guns and shoot mo water moccasins. <laughs> uh, and uh, see, there was some old coal pits at the back of our property on a ranch, the old Leaf Horse Ranch, and we used to go over there and ride our horses in those old, which weren't pits. They were like a pond. They were like, you know, big pits. We called them coal pits. And we'd play hide and go seek and cowboy and Indians in the coal pits with our horses. Did your parents know you were doing yeah. this? Yep. <laughs> and they weren't worried? Oh, no. And no accidents? No accidents. We were taught by my dad how to ride a horse. And all about shooting the moccasins. Oh, yeah. Well, we wanted them gone because we were scared of them. Yeah. You know, they'd just be laying, they'd just be laying curled up in the edge of the pond in the summertime. And there was always these stories about water moccasins, so you, you wanted them dead. And the girls got to do it as well as the boys. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> we had BB guns and, yeah. Well, when it was time to, to kill the chicken for the Sunday dinner, who did that? <clears throat> my mom did, but she always run the, kill the chickens, run the necks. And I remember one time I said, I asked, I don't remember how old I was, but I wanted to do that. So she let me do that, and I started wringing that chicken's neck, and I couldn't do it, and I let it go. And it was walking around with it, and all cracked and go, rah, rah, rah. And my mother was really upset with me because she had to catch the chicken and kill it. So I never did that again. So one and done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never wanted to do that again. So that was the end of that. Yeah. Well, describe the house that you grew up in. It was a, 
a little farmhouse. It had four rooms. The house was just like a square, and all the rooms were like square. No plumbing, and no, at first we had no electricity. Uh, we didn't have electricity, I think it was until like 1956, and it wasn't that we couldn't afford it, it wasn't there. Oh. And I, I think it was in July of 1956, and I might be wrong about that year, that REC set the pole on our property. And you can remember that. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember that. And then <clears throat> we got electricity, and uh, of course we had always come to town. On, we had aunts and uncles that lived in town, and so we'd come to town on Saturdays, and we'd go to my aunt and uncles, and we'd watch television until time to go, till 10 o'clock, got to watch the rest. And, and I remember we go to, went to school, and we were always the first on the school bus and always the last off the school bus. And the school bus is coming down the road, and there is a TV antenna on our house. Mm. And we were so excited, and it was, it was kept secret. That was a secret thing. And we were just, it was a surprise when we got home. I mean, but we're coming down the road, and I'll never forget it, that there was a TV antenna on top of our house, and we're like, oh, there's a TV antenna on top of our house. And so we knew that we had a TV. That was, yeah, that was, I was, I remember that like it was yesterday. She got that before she got a washing machine? No, she, uh, my mom had a washing machine, but it was a ringer washer. And she started, you started it, it had like a motor on it, kind of like a motorcycle. And I remember you pressed it with your foot and you started it. And I don't remember, she may have gotten an electric washing machine, I don't remember. Well, TV came first, though. Well, I guess I don't. I don't know that it really did, but uh, we had. A, I remember we had a ringer washer and it ran on a motor. Well, I have a freezer. Uh, we got a freezer. Well, see, school started in September. Um, I don't remember that being a big deal either. But okay. we had refrigerators. Um, I remember our, refer our refrigerator, I remember us having to come to Vanita, a refrigerator. It wasn't a refrigerator, it was an icebox. I remember us coming to Vanita and going to, there was an ice plant here in Vanita over on um, First and Van, I think. No, First and, uh, I guess it is Van maybe. But there was an ice plant there. And we came and got block ice for our refrig our ice box. Well, how far is Welch to to Vanita? Welch to Vanita is. <clears throat> we didn't live at Welch then. We had moved to northwest of Vanita, twelve miles more north, northwest of Vanita. So we were out in the country, twelve miles. So it's twelve miles to town. Well, when you mentioned you went to town earlier, you meant was it Vanita or was it Welch? It was to Vanita. To Vanita. Mm -hmm. It was to Vanita. Well, where did you go to high school? Benita. And what year did you graduate? 61. So you were, that was a little bit after integration then. You may have been here during the I was process. here. We, we was uh, in school in integration. And I was in the ninth grade. Okay. Do you remember anything particular about that, um, that transition? No, the, I, you know, when I look back on it, what's going on today, and what went on through the years, uh, integration to was nothing. It was just, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. It was just an easy, it was just a, an easy, it wasn't nothing. Okay. To us it wasn't, you know, there wasn't any problems. Like, see, I don't understand the problems that people have today, or did because we didn't experience that. Um, I remember we had a, a, a black teacher and he was always, they were always just, they wore suits and they were just really, really nice and you were just really impressed that everybody was just nice. Mm. There wasn't problems. Got along best they could. 
Yeah, there wasn't, to my knowledge, there was not any problems. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Well, did you have a favorite subject in high school? Homemaking. Homemaking. Oh, homemaking. homemaking. Um, I like to sew. My mother sewed. <clears throat> she made all of our clothes. And uh, uh, she had taught me that at, when I was older, I don't even remember how, she taught me how to embroidery. And I sewed, we had a treadle machine, and I sewed tea towels and embroidery tea towels. And so that was something I always liked to do was sew and uh, cook. My mom liked to cook. She loved to make bread. <clears throat> we had cakes all the time, and, but she was kind of pop famous for her bread. She made homemade bread. So a homemade would have been one year, two years? Uh, for the first year was in the um, eighth grade, and then there was four years of, of in mm -hmm. high school of homemaking. Did you go on to college with that? No, with I that, did No, I didn't. With the homemade quiz no. the intent? No. They could, people who typically like homemade go into co cooperative extension. Yes. So yeah, similar reasons that they like to sew and cook and show kids yeah. how to do it. No, I didn't. Um, I got married and had a um, kid, a son, and I continued to cook and sew and <clears throat> got good at doing hymns. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I made my own clothes. My mom made my own clothes. I never had a bottom dress. Where would you get your fabric? Uh, she, she would uh, get it from Vanita at Carter's. <clears throat> Carter's had a, uh, it, there was a big department store. They had the grocery and they had the hardware and uh, they had the department store which had fabric and patterns and had everything. They had everything until Walmart came out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> And I worked there. I worked there at Carter's in the department store. Well, do you sew today? Not very much. No. Have a machine, though? No. I have a machine. Yes, yeah, I do. That works. I have a machine. I have a serger. Uh, I have, actually have it all set up. I have it set up. I have a sewing room, and but I do not make my own clothes. Quilt? No, I don't want to make quilts. <laughs> But did your mother? Yes, my mother made quilts, yes. Yes, she made quilts from, uh, actually I have a quilt, <clears throat> I have a couple of quilts, uh, but one particular that I can go, I can sit down and look at that quilt and I can tell you, I have a dress out of that and my brother had a shirt out of that and uh, my mom had a dress out of I can pick those pieces out, yeah. Well, that's a pretty special heirloom then. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Have you any idea what the pattern is? No, I, I can't, don't remember what that is. I haven't even looked at it in years, it's put away and uh, it was used, we used it. You know, it wasn't anything that she just put away and looked and didn't use it, we used it. Well, was she a member of a homemaker club? Uh, yes, I believe she was, but I can't remember. Yes, she was, but I don't remember what the name of that club was. It was around here. And fewer and fewer of them, so how Oh, was. yeah. Yeah, and that's a, that was been a long time ago. You know, that's been 50 years ago. Well, once you graduated from high school, take me through. What, where did you go to work? Obviously, at some point. I, I went house, to work at the glass house. Right out of high school? And no, not right out of high school. I think, uh, oh, I say 61. Yeah, it was shortly after high school. I got I went to work at the glass house, and uh, <clears throat> I can't even remember how long I worked there. I worked there for a while, and I had a baby, and uh, then I went back to work at the glass house, and I worked there until I think '67, maybe '68, and we moved to Tulsa, and then uh, we moved back to Ketchum. And my husband um, was a mechanic, and uh, he opened a little garage there at, and worked out at our house. And that's where I still live. And how far is that from here? Uh, Ketchum is about 17 miles from Benita, like toward Grand Lake. 
Well, when you started at Glass House and then came back to Glass House, was Annabelle so yes. still? Yes, she was always there. there. Yes. She's the one that hired you? Yes, she's the one that hired me, yes. And what was your job there? I worked as a waitress. I worked in the broader room. And uh, <coughs> Ruth Hensley that you just interviewed, she is the one that trained me. And uh, you was, she trained you how every, I mean, how you set the table, how you, everything. Everything had to be done in a, in a certain way, and um, you carried nothing in your hands. Everything was in a tray, on a tray, and uh, yeah, she trained me as a waitress, and and I really appre I appreciate her today, and I, you know, that was a precious time for me. It was just. Um, did you have to serve certain things from certain Yes, you served certain, certain, certain things from certain so what sides and uh, removed plates from a certain side and you set the table. The tables were set with silverware and, and linen napkins and um, yeah, it was... Um, were they folded a certain way? Yes, they were, they were uh, rolled. We rolled it. Uh, we fixed our silverware. I can't even... Yeah, we did fold the napkin. I can't remember how we did that though. It's been, it's been a long time ago. A certain? It was certain, a certain, certain way, way, yes. Probably if I got my hands on it, I could tell you. You know, I could do it again, but I, at this moment, I can't tell you that. What, did they lay flat beside the plate, or were they those that they sit in the middle of your plate? Oh, they lay flat beside the plate. Yeah. Remember any famous people come through? Oh, yes. Um, I waited on Mr. Clean. And Mr. Clean was a real person, not a cartoon. He's a cartoon now, or animated, but uh, yeah, he was the real person. And um, I remember he had two, there was two other men with him, and uh, they were all dressed really nice, and he had like on a shark skin suit, you know, and he knew it was Mr. Clean. <clears throat> and uh, the state of Oklahoma was a dry state at that time. And we were not allowed to serve liquor, but we could give them something, a, a glass of ice or a Coke, whatever they wanted to put their drink in, and they could carry a bottle in, in a brown paper bag, and it was kept under the table. And you could serve them their, whatever they asked for, their <clears throat> Coke or water, ice, whatever, and they mixed their own drink, and then their bottle was kept under the table in a brown paper bag. And did Mr. Clean have one? Yes, he did. <laughs> That's why I can remember. Yes, he did. He had, yes, he did. He had a bottle. But I don't remember what that was. Okay. And um, the dining room was real, uh, we were really, really busy. And there was this table with these little kids, and they were my table. And this little boy says, Is that Mr. Clean? Is that Mr. Clean? I said, well, I don't know. I'll ask him and see. And, and I asked him if, if he was Mr. Clean. He said, I sure am. And so he, I got a piece of net, uh, my check stub, and uh, he signed the check stub, and I gave it to that little kid. And he was just so excited. <laughs> yeah, I might still even have that. I don't know. Because <clears throat> he signed one for the little boy and one for me. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, and it was just a fun place, a fun place to work. You know, we were always, uh, we made a lot of friends. Uh, one of the girls that I worked with, uh, her and I are still friends today. And, um, <clears throat> well, what would be considered a good tip from those days? Oh, um, five dollars. For a table of one or two? Uh, four or five, if you got a five dollar tip. I made 47 cents an hour. Our wages was 47 cents. And they took a quarter a day out of your check for food. You got to eat anything you wanted except for uh, the lobster tail and steak. <laughs> you got the mile high lemon pie though. Oh I'll my gosh, it. yes, the mile high lemon pie, yes. I've heard about that a lot today. <laughs> yes. Well, they had <clears throat> mild high lemon pie, uh, apple, 
and cherry and pecan and a chocolate cake. That was your designs. And what was your favorite of those? I loved the pecan pie in a cup of hot tea. That was my that was my deal, pecan pie in a cup of hot tea. That was worth twenty five cents a day. That was worth twenty five cents a day. <laughs> but we ate more than that. <clears throat> We ate more than our 25 cents. Well, I noticed the menu had uh, chicken pot pie. Oh my gosh, the chicken pot pie was delicious. It was delicious. Uh, as a matter of fact, I make, I cook some, I try to cook some of the things like they did still today. Like the vegetable soup, the vegetable soup, beef vegetable soup was absolutely wonderful. And they put a bay leaf in it. I have to have a bay leaf in my vegetable soup. <laughs> I don't know what it would taste like without it. I'm serious. I have to have a bay leaf in my vegetable soup. And uh, see the goulash, they did, they made goulash and I make my goulash today just like they did. And it was served with uh, cornbread that was corn sticks. And yes, I have to have my goulash with a bay leaf and corn sticks. I haven't had goulash in years, and I'm not sure what all's in it besides what corn and no. okra, okra and no. In my and her the goulash was not that's not, was what, not that's not what the, okay. okay it was macaroni, and it was a hamburger with a tomato sauce, okay. and it had the macaroni in it and a bay leaf, and it had onions cooked in it and a bay leaf. What's the deal with the bay leaf? I don't know. It has a flavor. Uh, you don't eat the bay leaf, yeah. but it had a flavor. Yeah. Well, as a homemade person and like to cook, you would know things like that. Yes. Yeah. And pay attention to that. Yeah. Thing, so. And then when you watch cooking shows, they'll, they'll talk about bay leaves periodically. You'll hear them put a bay leaf in something. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea what, it, if I didn't put it in there, what it would be like. Well, I'm thinking that it's sockatash or something that has the, all those vegetables in it, then isn't it something like that? Yes, or yes. chow chow or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, I'll have to look up some of these recipes too. Oh uh, yeah, and but the food was really good. It was always really, really good. Well, what was the specialty, do you think, that made regulars come back or people ordered the most of? Or uh, The chicken pot pie was popular. The French dip was always popular, and that's at with the French dip. It's like they served, like with the French dip, it came with your au jus and a salad with blue cheese dressing. That's the way it has to be. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes I get to thinking about that and I'll go buy me some blue cheese dressing to make me a roast beef sandwich and dip it in the juice. But you got to have thousands, you got to have the blue cheese dressing. What, did they make their own? Or they made their own dressing, yes. Yes, they made their own, they made their own everything. Have you figured out the recipe for it? Um, I, the best I can get to it is you take ranch dressing and I've tried, I've bought all the blue cheese dressings. No, okay, and of course. Then I, no, but if you take blue cheese dressing, I mean ranch dressing and you buy your blue cheese crumbles and mix it in with your, it tastes pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's better than, than if you go and buy just blue cheese dressing. No, I've not been able to find that. No, I try. Yeah, I can't find a good blue cheese either. That's my favorite. Yeah, so. but that is really good. The ranch dressing mm -hmm. with the blue cheese crumbles in. Well, would they do their own, like peeling the potatoes for mashed potatoes? And oh all yes, that sort of thing? everything. Yes, they peeled their own potatoes. Their own made their own mashed potatoes. We made our own hot rolls, cinnamon rolls. Our pies were baked there. Cakes were baked. Everything was baked there. And your whole time there it was still host international or yes international host yes to, yes howard johnson was in the mix somewhere it came after i left i never worked for harry johnson and then mcdonald's was i never was, uh, later, I was upset about that <laughs> <laughs> i think everybody was upset about I can that imagine, yes. yeah that's not wasn't right yeah but we had a they had a dishwashing machine downstairs and uh, 
the bakery was downstairs and um, the pots and pans was washed in a, in a separate big bin and but everything was cooked there. What well, did you have to do other jobs like fill in for something or were you just always a waitress? I was always the waitress. I was always, I never did, I never did work anywhere except for uh, the broiler room. Uh, there was a snack bar uh, and I never worked on the cafeteria in the cafeteria part. And I didn't ever work in the gift shop. Well, even in the roller room, it was mostly nights, nights then or afternoon to end of the evening. Uh, when we, when the first the roller room, when I first worked it worked, I worked in the evenings and it was in the roller room. And that was like from two to 10 or one to, uh, one thirty to 10, something like that, two to 10. And that was in the broiler room. But then later, they uh, closed the cafeteria and the broiler room was open to, for breakfast. It was open for breakfast. It was the only thing that was open. And the snack bar. Tips were higher in the afternoon, I would think. Tips were great in the afternoon. But you did real good uh, on the morning shift because you served to, uh, you served breakfast and you served lunch. Okay. So you would do pretty good there. But the broiler room was, uh, you just work, actually worked one shift. I mean, you only served one meal, and that was your evening. So when you came in at 2 o'clock uh, and you're changing shifts, things are pretty slow. So, but there was always something to do. You always had to polish the silverware. You had to run the sweep, clean the dining room, clean the chairs, um, Move, put the ice on the stations. There's always something to do until lunch hit. Well, who would assign those duties, Annabelle, or was there a we, chief, um, chief? We had a, she had an assistant ma manager, and that was Thelma Navis. And Thelma actually, Annabelle was there from morning till during the daytime, most of the time. And then uh, Thelma was there from, say, 2 to 10 until everybody went home. There to walk over problems there might be. Yes, yes, yes. And what was your uniform like? Um, like the one laying out there? Like the one laying out there, yes, except for that's the nylon. And our first uniform was actually cotton. It was gold just like that, but it was cotton. And um, the pinafore was cotton. And you, we took them and had, you had to, they had to be starched. And later we would, well, we would take them to the laundromat because if they did it, they were starched really, really good and you could, and they would stay looking nice for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have three or four aprons because uh, that's what you got dirty was your aprons. So you could wear your dress more than one you day? You could wear your dress more than one day, yes. Mm -hmm. But you had to wear hose, we had to wear hose and we had to wear girdles. Why, why a girdle though? Because, well, their reason was for safety, for support for your back, mm. and um, mm. they didn't want any wiggles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What well, was it, pantyhose or was it? Uh, there was no pantyhose. Pantyhose did not exist. So you'd have guard and guard. They yes, it was the hose and the guard, the garters yes, because they would have the little garters yeah. yeah. Wow. And nurses' shoes. You had to wear nurses' shoes. You had to have a good shoe. And at that time, the, all the white shoes were either nurses' shoes or tennis shoes. And you just couldn't. Uh, it was in, You could work in tennis shoes for a short period of time, but they really wanted you to have nurses' shoes, and because. Uh, of the walking and they were expensive they were very expensive but they were worth it because you were on your feet all day long not too many breaks not too many breaks you would get you would get a break you would have you would have you could have your breaks but there was times that you were so busy you didn't want to take a break because you took a break you lost your money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you didn't take breaks because how many tips Okay, you gotta have tips because if you took a break, then somebody else is gonna take your station. And I mean that was our deal, you know. If somebody else take your station, then when you come back, well, uh, you don't have no people because 
somebody else got them, and so we didn't we didn't take breaks, not like that. Well, if you were on for eight hours, how would you, <laughs> you just nibble out of your pocket or something? Actually, we had a, we'd have a little bowl of there was a place in the back of the kitchen that we could sit up and, and snack. Here, you got something to go by and take a bite. And go exactly, back. that is exactly what we did. We'd get us a little bowl of uh, soup and and we'd eat it and then go right. <laughs> Yeah, I was skinny. I weighed 114 pounds and I ate all the time. But you were moving all the time. Yes, we were moving all the time. Hmm. All of us were moving all the time. But it, but we didn't care because we liked it. I mean, we loved it. About how many would be on the same shift? On the same you? shift, there would be uh, about four, maybe five on a, on a uh, shift, depending on the day, of, the time of the year and the the time of the year and the time of the day. Well, how many tables were um, roughly? If I don't remember exactly, I can't tell you how many tables, but I know if the whole dining room was all the way open, it would seat like uh, 150 people. Oh, if uh, because there was ex, you know, there was like these doors, and they could open them all up, and it would the dining room would hold like 150. So maybe 30 or 40 tables. Probably. How many would you have at one one time for, um, for your like I for see, I see, I'd have to think about that. Uh, see, if you had station one, there was one big table and that would hold like six. And then there would be a, a deuce, that would be two. And then probably three or four, two or three, four, and a booth. So you'd probably have 20, 25 people. And that would turn over two or three times or more but during, yes. during, those, during that shift. Yes, yes. And there would be always, there would be somebody always waiting for a place to sit. Because we had a hostess and there was always people lined up to sit. And then we'd have our parties. Like people would have rent it and have parties, like weddings or, uh, I remember once the lawyers uh, had a convention or something and they rented the whole back room and so and at times like that she would ask other people to come in because we would have the ordinary people but then they would ask other people from other morning shift or somewhere to come in extra for for those parties you paid a little extra no tips for those i wouldn't think. you didn't get tips for that but uh she would tack that on and you got paid so much so you had to work your way up the chain of the food chain, as they say, to, as the new, new waitress versus one that had been there for five Not years. really, because she was always real fair about that. There wasn't any favorites. It was wherever she needed you, and um, you was okay. You know, if you had, if you went back and worked that party, you was okay because you was compensated the same as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So there really wasn't an issue with that. With that. Well, would she have holiday? Parties for its staff. Yes. For its staff. She uh, uh, she would do Christmas parties for the staff and their ch and their kids, um, and that's really what it was all about was was about the kids. But it, uh, I remember having it was over in the part where the buffet's at or the cafeteria is at, and. Um, Ted Nixon was the Santa Claus, and she'd have Santa Claus come, and she'd have this big Christmas tree and uh, little gifts for all the kids, and you know she always had a big party for the. And then I was there, uh, the tenth anniversary, and it was um, I'm not sure exactly what the ten years was, but this was around this was in October, and it was Halloween. And uh, the one of the cooks, Nancy Smith, she lived out in the country, um, out by Koshlar on a farm, and they um, had the party out in the woods, and they cut off tree uh, tree stumps for people to sit on, and they had a little pit where they cooked the steaks, and she had little brown bags of uh, had sand in them, and a candle. And they'll sit around all around the trees. And uh, people dressed up for Halloween 
and they had a contest of, uh, for who won first place and second place. And my girlfriend and I won first place. <laughs> what did you dress up as? <laughs> oh God, I was telling this way this. There was these two, two boys, uh, Marion, Arnold, and Russell Walker. They uh, worked in the bakery, and then my friend Darlene and I, and we were buds, okay? We were buds. And uh, no one knew this except the four of us and Annabelle, that uh, Darlene and I talked, but Marion, his name, we can call him Butch, but Marion, and Russell into letting us dress them up like women. And so her and I went to the Goodwill store and we bought them dresses and purses and gloves. I've got to find these pictures. And bought them wigs and they had little hats. And we bought them makeup and false eyelashes. <laughs> and in the bakery, we put all their makeup on them. They were Marion was a pretty little woman, <laughs> and Russell was, um, he was a big guy, okay, so he was, he was a big woman. Anyway, so then Darlene and I, and I've got the pictures up somewhere, and Annabelle took pictures, but I, and I gotta find those pictures, but, so Darlene and I, we really didn't have a plan for us, we didn't know what we were gonna do. And, uh, but we had, we had bought wigs and a mask and um, so she had brought cowboy boots and I had these big old house shoes that looked like big old red feet and I had this uh, uh, linen uh, like coveralls that were my mother-in-law's fishing pants and, and they were entirely too big for her. And I don't even know how and why we did this but we decided that we could both get in that pair of pants. <laughs> so she was in one leg and I was in the other leg and we were a two-headed person. How did you walk? What well, that, see, we didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing this, putting this together, we didn't think about what kind of problems we were gonna have. And uh, so we walked together. <laughs> And Marion and Russell uh, had to help us. After we got it together, they had to help us. And Annabelle came out and took our picture, but then we can't walk to the car. And you know, like she had one cowboy boot on, and I had a cowboy boot on, and we had a shoe on. And we were like this. And uh, she's a taller than I am, so that was another issue. <laughs> you know? But we were having fun, and who cared, you know? Yeah. So uh, they had to help us to the car. And like I said, we didn't think about what kind of problems we were gonna have. And then when we get out to the car, we can't get in the car. <laughs> and so together, we have to, together, and Butch on one side and wrestle the other, and then pulled us and pushed us in the car. Got us in the back seat. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> And then we get out there, and nobody knows nobody knows who we are, and we're not talking. Okay, we're not talking because if we say anything, don't know who we are. And so everybody's all lined up, and we're walking around and together, and and uh, kind of picking at people, you know. And they're like, "Who's in there? Who's in there?" <laughs> and we wouldn't say anything, and then. Somebody pinched Darling on the butt. She goes, oh, somebody pinched me. You know, we're in the same pair of pants, okay? <laughs> it was just crazy. And then we got tired and we needed to sit down and we couldn't sit down. So they took us to the car and shoved us up on the hood of the car. And we won first place. And then when we pulled our mask off, they go, oh, it's Judy and Darling. <laughs> Should have known it was Judy and Darling, you know, because we were always doing something. And the boys didn't care to be dressed up as Oh no, they were having a good time too. <laughs> they were younger than we were, okay, we were older than them. They were 17, 
1617. It's blackmail photos now. <laughs> I have got to find that picture because it's it's a Polaroid, and but I've got it's black and white, and I got to find that picture because it is so funny. That was uh, that was funny. It was in October for. It, yeah, it was in it was in October for Halloween because that's why everybody dressed up like Halloween. And then the little man that. Um, he was a cook in the kitchen. He was an older man. He won second second place, and he came dressed as an old woman walking backwards. Like he put the mask on the back of his head, and he had his co oh, big old coat on, and it was buttoned up the back. And he looked, and he put a headscarf on his head. He looked like an old woman walking backwards. <laughs> Some creativity there. I know we didn't have costumes. You had to. You know, and, they, and they were better. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have, you couldn't go to the store and buy costumes. I don't know, it's just, you had to do whatever you could think of to do, I guess. Well, would customers come in dressed up? I don't remember that, no. Mm -hmm. I do not remember customers coming in dressed up. Remember any stranded ones during bad weather? Uh, I do, but I can't, there wasn't anything uh, outstanding, uh, not anything outstanding happened. Big buses full of people coming. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> <clears throat> One time, and I think it was in the winter time, and me and Darlene again, we didn't have any, any, didn't have any people. No people in the dining room, no customers. And so we're wandering off down to the gift shop and we're piddling around down there and, and there was a Buddha there. And we rubbed that Buddha's belly. I said, don't ever rub, rub a Buddha's belly, okay? We rubbed that Buddha's belly and go, oh, I wish we'd get a whole bunch of people. I wish we'd get a whole bunch of people. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got about six buses. And we said we'd never do that again. <laughs> Line Them buses were already on the way, okay? You know what I'm saying? They were already on the way. Yeah, it was, and but the snack bar was open and people were, you know, it was just crazy. Wage on as fast as you could. And we swore we'd never rub another Buddha's belly. <laughs> well, would customers get irate if they had to wait too long or bad service? I don't remember that anything? either. Anything? Mm -mm. I don't remember that. Irregulars that would show up? <sighs> Probably, but I don't remember them either. I can tell you who would. I mean, there was local people that would come, but uh, periodically, but not anybody locally came on a regular basis because they really couldn't afford it. I guess it was. Uh, you know, there a lot of people came from Tulsa and Joplin because. There wasn't anything as nice as the glass house in Tulsa and North Joplin. For the broiler room primarily? Yes, not for the, the broiler room. Not the cafeteria line? No, just for the broiler room. Mm -hmm. And at the time when I was working there, Shangri-La was uh, being built. And it opened during the time that I was there because Annabelle took what couple of girls, whatever our days off was, she took us there for dinner uh, when they first opened. To check out the competition. To check out the competition. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right, yeah. She sounds like a neat lady. Oh, she was. Yeah, she was. She was a, she was a wonderful person. She was just a wonderful person. And she didn't have children like that. So I no, that. she did not have any children, and so all the people that worked there were her children. Took care of them. She took care of them. She sure did. Well, if you all had uniforms, would she wear something special, or was she? She, uh, her, special? and Thelma had uniforms, and their uniform was a, uh, it was a light blue dress, and it seems like it. I think it buttoned up the front. And it was it was light blue, and uh, they had these uh, belts that were uh, 
like elastic, but they were metal, like a concho, like a concho belt, but it was on elastic. And that's how, that was their dress. That was their uniform. And would have their? Have their name, yes. Yes. Everybody had a name badge. Yes. So if they come in, a regulars come in, they would say, I want Judy today, or could they just sit first table? They could them? ask, they could ask uh, the, they could ask the hostess if they wanted to sit at our station. But you, you didn't have the same station all the time. The stations rotated. And who would decide that? But this Thelma person, um, the assistant manager? Probably, I think the hostess did the schedule. Okay. For, for the roller room. I think she did the schedule for the roller room. And that's not a, a position that was higher than being a waitress, a hostess? The hostess? Uh, yes, it was. She didn't get tips. She didn't make tips. But she seated, she took the money and uh, she greeted people and she seated them. Okay. And uh, if, you was, if you was busy, uh, she would take them water. Uh, she would help you if you need, if if they was busy and you needed help, she would jump in and help if she could. Well, would you have, would you have wanted to switch from being a, a waitress to being a hostess? Um, no. Made more money the other way. Made more money the other way, but then we also learned to run the register also if uh, if we needed to. Mm. And but we didn't have to do that very often. Maybe maybe the hostess was sick or something, and there was no one to fill in. But and in the winter time, it was kind of pretty low staff. Well, did people generally want seats by the windows? Oh yes. So you'd hope for that station if you were. Yeah. Well, yeah. everybody had a window. Every station had a window. Okay. Seat. Try to be fair that way. Yes. Too. Uh huh. And every, but everybody had a window seat. Yes. So it was everything was fair. They, they made it a point that it'd be fair. Well, when you weren't working there, would you go on occasion there to let them serve you for a change? Yes, I did. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would take my son. He was like four years old. And I took, I've got a couple of pictures of him that I took him to uh, on my day off. And, uh, and he was out of school or so, I'm at school or something. and. I took him there for his birthday or something, and we sat in a window seat. <laughs> and he liked grasshopper ice cream. Yeah, he remembers that. And he liked to watch the cars go by under him. Oh, I don't know that that was a big deal. You know, I don't know that that was a big deal. And it's, as a matter of fact, we didn't even notice that anymore. You, It just was not an issue, the thing, the cars going under you. Well, could you hear them? Uh, I don't remember that. We had music oh, that had piped in, had music in the people, the dishes, and I don't, no, I don't think you mm -hmm. could hear them. Well, what about the windows that you could, the louver, louver, the louver windows? Yeah, they were only on one side. They were on the side that, that faced the west. Okay. And they automatically <clears throat> would, they closed with the sun and then they would open back up at, at sunset or at night time. That would be neat to watch. Yeah, and it was a slow thing though. Uh, I don't remember even if you could even see it, but it, it happened Cause, because the sun was always on that, that side and uh, so when it was really hot, they were closed and then in nighttime they were open. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, they didn't have louvers on that, that faced the east. You know, it was almost quitting time, I guess, if it was completely on the, well, no, but not if they opened back up. No. So they'd be open at night. Yeah, they'd be open at night, yeah. So scratch that. Yeah, yeah, they were open at night time. And then you'd see the lights from the cars. Yeah, then you'd see the lights from the cars, yes. Mm -hmm. And we had candle, a candle, in the boiler room, I had a candle light. Oh, you can. It had, uh, they were like little wooden round things like that and you put a candle in it, but the globes were big like that, about that tall. And you just lift it up and every, every evening the candles were lit, like at five o'clock. And you, waitresses would take time, turns doing that or? Yes, you did your own station. Oh, you did your own. Mm -hmm. No fires. No, no fires. It was a big glass globe. 
and uh, then um, every evening you had to take a towel and a wet towel and put on and wipe the globe out just for your station or just for your station but every, if you if you needed help there was always somebody there was, people would help you everybody worked together I would imagine there'd be some nights that you didn't get out at 10 o'clock. There were some nights, nights we did not get out at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That is right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that was okay. Made more money. Yeah. Made more money, had more jingle in our pocket. But your feet were more tired. Our feet were more tired, okay. but we didn't care. It was okay. Well, what made you decide to, to stop working there? Uh, I moved to Tulsa. We moved to Tulsa. That's when I stopped working there. I moved okay. to Tulsa. And then when we moved back, uh, I went to work at Carter's in Benita. And that's a, a restaurant? No, it's Carter's. It was a, oh, was a fabric and stuff. grocery store, uh, hardware, and uh, a department store. Quite a bit different from being a what? Yes. But still customer service. Or yeah, still stuff. customer service, yes. And now I work. Uh, Two miles from my house at uh, at for Country Stall Healthcare, and I've been there 21 years. Coming August, and I'm the office manager there. Mm -hmm. Plan to retire anytime soon? I don't know how to spell that. Soon I'll retire. <laughs> um, as long as you're enjoying it, there's no need to, right? That's right, right. Mm -hmm. And you have one child. Oh yes, one I have son. one. Grandchildren? No grandchildren. Grand puppies. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have a little weenie dog. I read somewhere that Annabelle had dachshunds. Do you, did you I don't that? remember that, no. And that they were always named Fritz. It was something in the paper. I was looking at old papers from the 60s, and it said something about that. Oh, wow, I didn't know that she know. had. I didn't know that. I don't know who would know of this bunch that's coming. I don't know. Warren Fetter would know. If he comes tomorrow, I'll ask. Mm, he know he would know what kind of dogs she had. That's different dachshunds. Yeah, I have two. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, <laughs> and then my friend Darlene that I'm talking about, she has dachshunds. That's kind of funny. Yeah. If Annabelle had dachshunds, yeah. yeah. But I've had different dogs through the. Uh, that's what I have now. Do you remember when she passed away? Were you were you in Benita when she passed away? I lived at Ketchum when she passed away. I wonder when that was. I don't. I haven't seen anything when uh, that was. I don't remember when that was. In the last ten years, or longer than that. I think longer than that. Okay. I'm positive longer than that. And do you think she's buried here in Benita? Since she was oh from, yes, since she was from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can do some digging. Yeah, I'm sure she's buried at the Fairview Cemetery because that her they were from here. Her mom was from here. And okay, I wondered where she'd gotten her training, but someone thought she had been trained under someone named Kellogg or Keller or Mrs. Mrs. Kellogg. Kellogg. Is it Kellogg? Yes, that's how I remember Mrs. Okay. Kellogg. She was pre Annabelle. Annabelle. Yes, but I didn't. Uh, when I met Mrs. Kellogg, she was like a supervisor over more than the glass house at Benita. Okay. I think she was, <clears throat> seems like she was from uh, Kentucky or somewhere. Yeah. Different type of approach than Miss Southern. Yes, yes. She was an old. She was an older lady, and um, seems like she was kind of like you know, real staunch. I don't know. Um, I don't, would only see her periodically, but um, she was real strict. And uh, when whenever she did come and with her, everybody uh, was serious. Shaked up and. Shaped. Flew right that day, huh? <laughs> you know, we had a good time, okay? We would have a good time. But on those days, no, you didn't. You did it right. 
Well, were, were, you could call in sick, or were you? If you were sick. If you were really sick. I guess, I don't know. Um, Did you have your own car by that time? Where yes. You could go yes. yourself? Yes. You to be. Yeah. But I don't remember calling in sick. And uh, I don't, I don't remember anything about that. Would you get pay raises along the way? Seems like, um, seems like I, the last I worked, I was making forty-seven cents an hour. But it seems like I made less than that. But it was the tips. Was, that forty-seven cents an hour wasn't nothing. It was the tips. Would you have to report how many tips you got? What your tips were? We were supposed to, we, yes we were, but Annabelle did not want to know what they were. That was our, she didn't want to know how much we made. It was us, up to us to write that in. And I don't want to know, she said. I did it. Do whatever is right for yourself, okay. Or taxes, how, the rules changed with that sort of thing too, sometime during that part, I think, didn't Yes. It? Well, at first we did, I remember at first we didn't have to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, we didn't have to do that. And then that's what I'm saying, when it had, when it, the rule, when it changed that we had to, I don't think she was real happy about that. You know, we weren't real happy about that, and I'm sure she wasn't real happy about that either, but it was what we had to do, and we had to write it in, and she said, no, I don't want to know. Okay. Nice. Okay, we got the picture. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's word, just move on. Huh? Yeah. I, don't, she, I can still see her saying that, and I don't want to know. <laughs> so, we never told, we never, she never asked if we didn't tell. How much older was she than you? I don't, didn't ever feel like she was a whole lot older than me. I don't really know how old she was. Five or six years, ten at the most. I don't know, I don't have any idea either. Mm, no more than ten years, I don't think. Okay. Would she help serve sometimes if you yes. really busy? Yes, if, if we would get buses, uh, if we would get buses and we were swamped, she was right out there in the busting tables and in the kitchen, uh, wherever she needed, she would take money, she did it all. She knew how to do it all. And she would be right there with you. And so would Thelma, the uh, assistant manager. She would be out there too. It's a team effort. It was all a team effort. Everything was a team effort. Everybody worked together as a team. Well, have you been back out since it's been reopened, renovated and reopened? No, I haven't. Last time you was there? The last time I was there, uh, it was McDonald's. And uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, we were, I go home that way over the overpass sometimes if I come to Bonita. I said, well, let's go get us a fish sandwich. <laughs> and it's just not, uh, I could walk around and see because things aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, in the bathrooms, there was a machine for perfume. Mm -hmm. I just don't thought, and it would be a high dollar perfume, you know. And you, I don't remember how much it was, but you'd put a quarter in there or something and get a squirt. And people used it? I guess they did. Huh. Something similar in the men's? I don't know. Like aftershave or something? I don't know. Huh. Interesting. But I knew there was, I remember there was in, in the ladies, in, in the ladies that was open to the public. We had our own bathrooms. The employees had their own bathrooms. Well, how was it decorated? Was there, like, since it's Will Rogers Turnpike, was there stuff that had referred to him? Yes, there was a, a statues. There was a statue of him, and uh, I really can't remember it, anything other than uh, it was. I just can't. I don't remember that. 
In the postcards look like, like there's at least some artwork on the wall. Yes, on there the was artwork, uh, but I can't. I don't remember. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of wall space actually because it was glass. Yeah, you know, this one whole side over here is all glass, and this was all glass. Uh, so there really wasn't a lot of wall. There wasn't a lot of wall space. And then where the uh, went out to the hall, it was open. It wasn't totally open, but it was had some kind of design there, but it was open. So there really wasn't a lot of wall space. And it had escalators. It had escalators on both ends. Yes, yes. Had an elevator too. I would imagine that the escalators were thrilling to some kids that had never oh, seen yes. one before. Oh yes. Back in the yes. 60s. And when I went out there, when it was McDonald's, the escalators were gone. I uh, wonder if they've put them back in since it's been renovated. I don't know. We're going to stop on our way back and see. And I think Subway's out there too. It's all the sign for you. Yeah. yeah. And some come and go or some convenience store. Um, yeah, and, and then see it was con Continental. Continental. It was the service station. Conoco now. Conoco, Conoco. Because it belonged to Conoco. The building belonged to Continental Oil. It was full service, someone said. It was full service, yes it was. That would have been neat to see that in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was full service. Yeah, um, and uh, the guys that worked in the station have their own stories. I get a couple of those tomorrow, I'm anxious to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and then stories would float up the stairs, okay? Because <laughs> they would come in, they would come up there and eat or have coffee, and they would be telling what they saw when it was washing a window. <laughs> you know? People, I think. Uh... Oh, and the Highway Patrol would have stories too. There was the Highway Patrol at that time. And they were regulars, I guess, then. And they were regulars, too. Yes, I went to were regulars, too. They got their coffee for free. They got their coffee for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and they, they would meet there. They would, uh, like, once a day, they would all meet there at a certain time and have their coffee together. And their mild high lemon pie, no? Yeah, and they usually didn't eat, though. They yeah. usually did. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But they didn't spend um, money. They didn't tip either. <laughs> Just took up space at your table. Huh? They didn't take the table. They'd take a booth. They always sat in a booth. Mm -hmm. And if we were busy, they didn't. They weren't. They weren't there. They'd always come in mid afternoon when there was nothing, nobody there. You were there in the sixties. The Vietnam War was going on there at that time. Yes, one of, uh, one of the young men that was our bus boy, Harry Drescher, uh, went to Vietnam and he was killed over there. Mm -hmm. And he was actually the only person um, that I personally knew that died in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And he was just, he was just young and Good little guy. I figured there might have been some military transports going back and forth during that time. I think there was, but they went to the snack bar. Faster. Faster. Okay. okay. And the people that worked in the snack bar, the snack bar was set up, uh, it was over 24 hours a day. And it was set up that they served, uh, they, served you and cooked it right here and it was you know sandwiches and hamburgers and bacon eggs and pancakes that fast stuff but it was cooked then it wasn't fast like it was already cooked they cooked it but yeah they went to the snack bar well i've heard a couple of stories about eggs from from the glass house do you have any <laughs> any comments about eggs <laughs> uh, scrambled eggs or easy over or no but um, I have thought of this last night when I was looking at the menu Yvonne posted the menu on Facebook and I was looking at the menu and I forgot about that we had these shakes and we served them in big frosted mugs and uh, I remember this man ordering uh, 
Now I understand I'm a little country girl, okay? <laughs> he ordered a chocolate shake and he wanted an egg in it. Okay. A raw egg. Raw egg. And I just cracked the egg and put it in there and it floated to the top. <laughs> and I carried it out there to him and he go, well, he wanted it beat up. You know, it's like, I was really? <laughs> so you had to redo? I had to redo, yes, I had to redo. But you know, I never heard of anybody doing that. Me either. Wonder. And for the foam or top, or he wanted no, it mixed he, in. No, he wanted it mixed in for the protein. Hmm. Yeah, it's some, some something yeah. people do that. Lifted weights or something. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Just pour it down and do it over. Yeah, pour it down, and do it over. He probably got lesson a, learned. He probably got a chuckle out of that. Yes, yes. And one of the things that I. I learned to eat that I love, and that is apple pie with a slice of American cheese on top of it. Melted. It is yummy. Seems like an odd combination. But it's good. Together. Mm -hmm. I and, tried it. Uh, and it was on the menu, a slice of cheese was like 10 cents extra. And you just uh, put it in the oven and let it warm a little bit and melt it, and it was, it's good. I love it. You're making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> food was really good. Do you have a favorite thing that you really like? Food? I love the chicken pot pie. Was it made in house? Yes, it was made in house. And it was scooped up into a bowl. And the crust was, uh, they made the crust, it was like a pie crust, and they print, uh, it was round like that, and you put the top on it. And when you, and you, everything was served with an under dish. And when you served it, you took the crust off for them and you scooped the pie out on top of the crust. And then you took that away. Kind of, kind of elegance. Yeah. Yeah. People ordered it just to get to do that. Huh? I guess. And some people that had ate it before would say, you know, that's okay, I'll eat it like that. But, but that's how we would serve it, was that they had a plate and we would put the top out and then scoop it out and then those dishes were took away. I think it's the better way to eat it. The crust is the best part. Yes, on the bottom. Yeah. See, that put the crust on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was really good. Have you figured out how to bake it? Close to it. So you don't have to share these recipes. Just close to it. Well, round them up and send them when we, when we They're up them here. Or write them down. <laughs> They're up here. Seriously, write some of them down. But their food was absolutely wonderful. Any, did they try anything that didn't work, that wasn't received well, that sticks out in your mind? No. I don't re no, I don't recall that. It was a dud and didn't work. I think everything had been already tried and tested. Because they had hosted a national event. Yeah, program. hosted a national, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, everything had been, because everything had to be approved by them. Yeah, that makes sense. I often wondered what ever happened to Host International. Well, it went, it went broken. I don't know, I mean, it went out of business at some point, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, so, maybe someone bought it out. I, I really don't know. I'm curious too, so I'll do some research and see mm -hmm. if it. it was from California, wasn't it? Yes. Who, who knows? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they had a restaurant in Hawaii too. Seems like they had something in Hawaii. Well, actually, what they do would, would lease, uh, you know, lease the facilities for a certain length of time. Yeah, I think this one for a while belonged to the. I guess it still does belong to the Turnpike. Yes, the Turnpike. The way I understand it, belonged to Continental Oil. And with the agreement that after so many years they turned it over to the term to the Turnpike Authority. Okay. And then so they get the money from whatever business what? happens to be in it. Yes. Yes. That's why McDonald's is there. Yes. That's why McDonald's is there. And why Subway is there. Yeah. And why 
whatever the convenience store. Well, travelers don't want to spend the time anymore. No, to they don't. It's fast food and move on. No, they don't. But yeah, that was a, a, it was a really special time, you know. Uh, things are different now. But you're glad you worked, did that. Oh, oh yes, I am. It. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I am very glad that I did that. Uh, met a lot of people. Uh, made a lot of friends and that are still friends. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Good tips. Good times, good tips, good food. Yeah. I think that's a good way to end, don't you? Yeah, I think so too. All right, thank you. Oh, you're welcome.